Let's talk about the DJI Fly App main interface for the Mavic Mini and probably the Mavic Air 2, with some additional tips and information along the way. If you are struggling to understand what are the usage of those icons or indicator, this video might be able to give you some idea and better understanding towards it. I am not going to cover everything in each of the icon or indicator because it is going to be very lengthy. So I just gonna put in some points that I thought it will be important to know in my opinion. Mavic Air 2 has probably more options compared to Mavic Mini, especially the camera setting, an additional sensor indicator in the interface, and different mode name and speed. But overall, the information can be cross-referenced with each other too. With this video, I will choose the Mavic Mini interface as I personally own and experience it. Please do like this video if you found it useful or interesting and consider subscribe for future notification of my new video upload. Your support is highly appreciated. Before auto or manual launching the DJI Fly app, to prevent this warning appear and risk app crashing or frozen screen, it is recommended to always close all other running background apps. Lesser mobile device CPU usage generally would mean lesser battery consumption and to provide better performance stability to the Fly app. This is how the main interface of the DJI Fly app version 1.1.5 looks like with your mobile device after you have connected the cable with the remote control and the connection has been established with the aircraft. Let's begin from the top left and all the way clockwise. This arrow is for you to go back to the DJI Fly app home screen. This is the mode or speed of the aircraft. Tap to change between P position mode, C scenic smooth mode and S sport mode. The main difference is the manual speed between these three modes. Being C mode is the slowest, S mode is the fastest and P mode is the default and moderate speed in between them. If you are a beginner, I would advise to use C mode for a start as the speed of all manual will be slower and try not to fully push the stick all the way especially if you are surrounded by obstacle around like flying outside your car porch, the garden, backyard or indoor so you will have time to react in the case of emergency. Best is to bring it out on a wide open space to get familiar with everything and wash out for the tree. Aside from that, most of the time I use CMOD to capture a close range scene or object to get a smooth, stable movement footage with probably between 20 to 50% of the stick control as it is much more easy to correct any wrong movement or maneuver or to keep the object nicely in the middle of the frame like doing a manual orbit on an object for example. The next one will be the aircraft status which is a crucial part of information. Any abnormal operation will be displayed here with mostly red background and white text that surely will catch your attention. Sometimes a pop-up warning will appear as well. You can also tap on the warning to get the full description of it. Try to follow the instruction promptly for a safe flight. Now on the top right, this one will be the Wi-Fi transmission signal strength between just the aircraft and the remote control. It has nothing to do with your mobile device Wi-Fi. You will probably see this warning message if you are flying in a high interference area that will affect or interfere with the signal such as radio transmitter tower, cell tower, pylon, in a city, housing estate, buildings that most probably has their home or business internet Wi-Fi in these modern days. Also, avoid flying directly across or around an obstacle that will result in direct obstruction of signal between the remote control and the aircraft and lead to an instant signal loss. If this icon change from white to blinking red together with the RC signal loss status and the blinking remote control, 
It means that the remote control has completely lost connection with the aircraft. I had a video explaining way of getting the best optimum signal transmission aside from other Wi-Fi interference and what happened after it lost connection. I put the link in the description below. This is the GPS and GLONASS satellite with a number representing the total satellite connection that has been established or connected to quickly acquire for satellite connection before takeoff. Make sure the aircraft is not near to any tall building or underneath a shaded or covered area. The aircraft will need a minimum of 8 satellites to establish the current aircraft home point and have a better positioning. The more the merrier. Personally, I would normally wait for about 11 or more satellites connected before I take off. Then we have the battery remaining percentage that we should always be aware of most of the time. And beside it will be the estimated flight time left. The time display will decrease and increase if you notice because it is just an estimation for the current power consumption and roughly how long it can last for the same power consumption. You can also tap on it to check the battery temperature, voltage of each cell and the total flight time. The voltage display provided is also quite important aside from the percentage of remaining battery. If you see this warning appeared, it could be probably one of the battery cell has dropped below 3.3 watt, especially when using spot mode and below 30%. Try switch to P mode and see if the warning will disappear. Or if you see this warning, it could be a large deviation of voltage between the two cells. If either of that happen continuously on several occasions, upload your flight lock to air data and check your battery lock in there. The maximum speed of the aircraft in particularly spot mode will also be affected and reduced aside from wind resistance and aircraft condition. If the battery voltage is low, and unable to supply sufficient power to the motor to rotate according to the requested speed. It would be best to always start your flight with a fully charged battery to avoid unnecessary complication. These three dots will allow you to access into more important settings. I'm not going to go through this setting in this video for now, but I have a quick video that only cover the important pre-flight check setting. Again, I put the link in the description below. Now on the right side, you can access to the photo and video option or to start a quick shot. You will need a working SD card inserted inside the aircraft in order to do that. Then the next one everyone's are familiar with, to start a video recording or to snap a photo. Alternatively, you can also use your remote control to snap photo or start video recording or to switch between photo and video mode. This is the playback that allow you to access the storage of your SD card in the aircraft to view or download the original resolution photo or video into the connected mobile device. I normally do that if I have a little bit battery left after landed to get some instant photo or some short video only. Try not to let the aircraft sitting either with a lack of air movement for too long to prevent this warning especially when downloading a whole lot of those wonderful photo or video you have captured. I prefer to take the SD card out from the aircraft and transfer via computer. On the bottom right. This will be the camera setting to adjust the exposure, lock the exposure value, manual ISO, and shutter speed to your preference for both photo and video after the last 1.05 aircraft firmware update. I'm not going to cover this for now. Maybe I'll make a separate video to focus only on this camera setting in the future. And the bottom middle. This will be the orientation indicator between the aircraft and the mobile device attached and connected to the remote control. This orientation indicator come in handy as it can be viewed easily 
and allow us to know where is the aircraft and to point the remote control antenna towards the aircraft to get the best signal transmission especially for those who use add-on signal booster like the parabolic or the yagi type that is currently available in the market as both booster will make the frequency wave more focused and narrow into one particular direction compared to the stock antenna that has a wider spread of signal wave towards the front and the back if your orientation is not working accurately or only show a blinking red I have already made a comprehensive video with explanation together with some solution that I hope it helps to solve the problem again link will be in the description below at the bottom left this will be the flight telemetry the distance display is between the aircraft and the home point not the remote control or the phone on top of it will be the horizontal speed the hash will be the height or altitude from the ground we took off not above sea level so if we took off at a higher ground or altitude say on 100 meter hill the height or altitude display will start at zero the value will become negative two if you fly downhill you can change the measurement unit in the setting under the control to your preference this will be the map with two sizes available and also option to choose between three different map types you can also view the home point the remote control location and direction the aircraft and heading and the flight path from the map if you need it if you are traveling to other country or going to places without a data mobile device you can refer to my other video on how to get the map catch beforehand link at the description below and the last one will be the auto takeoff if the aircraft is still on the ground for takeoff tap it once to bring up this option tap and hold until the green fully circled and the aircraft will start the motor and take off itself you can also use this to bring up the unlock option for authorization of enhanced warning in blue zone and follow the instruction accordingly if you will need a sim card with cellular service available during this process best to check your local regulation if you are concerned on doing that when the aircraft is in mid-air the icon will then change into this and there will be option to engage land or auto rth the auto rth will request the aircraft to return and initiate landing at the recorded home point as for the land option the aircraft will land on the spot directly where the aircraft is currently located with zero buffer or waiting time a good way to probably save the aircraft in case of emergency or to avoid a fly away if you came across a strong headwind and nothing else you can do to bring it back i also do have an animation video talking about wind in theoretically basis if you are interested you can check it out as well that's all for now thanks for watching and hope to see you on my next video again take care stay safe and fly safe